Hello everybody, my name is Togal and welcome back to part 3 of my Advanced Rocketry Mod Spotlight series. Today we're gonna play with satellites and how to shoot them up into space, how to have them collect data for us, what to do with the data and then to build a mining rocket that will collect resources for us from asteroids. Okay, so let's run over to the new section over here that I have prepared with a lot of different, um, well, actually the satellites are all the same, but with a bunch of different launch pads, they all have the same size. And I went with the same rocket design that we made in the first, uh, second episode, last episode. Um, the big difference is right here, you guys see there is a satellite bay is here. Instead of having the guidance computer and a seat, all we have is the fuel tanks, the uh, engines and then also one of the satellite base because we're going to need that to put in um, a chip. And otherwise, it's the same as building a rocket, just a launch pad and the, what is this called? The structure tower. And of course, we need a rocket assembly machine um, to actually make a rocket out of this. And then we also need the fueling station to fuel them all. And I also like to have this rocket monitoring station. So let's go ahead and start first talking. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and build all of these here real quick. So they're ready. I could have probably done that before I started recording, but it only takes a quick second. And you guys see, I, I know they all work because I've tested this quite a bit. Um, this part of advanced rocketry actually took me the longest to figure out because uh, the GUI has changed a bit and how you make the satellites and so on, as well as the astrobody data processor and the observatories. But we get to those in a second. They all changed a bit and it was really hard to figure out for me. So what you need to make yourself is a satellite builder. And I made three different ones here. Um, you only need one, of course. And the GUI is now getting a little bit more complicated than all the other machines. And what we make here is pretty much a custom satellite. Now, I'm going to just show you guys how to do it here. And if you play on an older version, I'm sorry that it's going to be a little bit harder to uh, follow this along. But um, I believe the, yeah, you did not need to in the older versions actually make a satellite chassis, an empty chassis. But this is something new. So you need to put the chassis in here. And then the other parts right here, you're always going to need a satellite ID chip because we need a unique ID per satellite in order to talk to it later on. And this field right here is so you can make copies in the satellite builder. That's the only machine you can make copies in of satellite ID chips, as well as, oops, sorry. Um, you can also make copies of the station chip. Let's see here where it is. Satellite ID, planet ID, right here, space station ID chip. I have not tested the uh, space elevator chip, if you can make copies of that as well. But I will try that once we set up our first space elevator. So anyways, let's get back to the satellites. You put an empty chassis in here and then just a satellite ID chip. And then up here, we're going to um, tell the satellite builder what type of satellite we're going to make. And this takes a little bit of explaining because there is three data values that the satellites collect for you. Um, they, you shoot them up and then they just float up there and they collect passively data for you. And there are three types. There is number one, um, right here, the optical sensor. That's what I have here. This will generate you distance data. Then we also have the composition sensor, which collects your composition data and the mass detector. And that's why I have three different ones because we're going to have three different types and I want to make two of each satellites just because it's going to collect us data faster for the purpose of this tutorial. Okay. And then also right here, we're going to need to give, there's an IO right here. We need to give it the data storage chips. This is actually, um, that stores the data it collects while being up there. And then you can download the data from these chips. You can, I believe only go with one, but you know, I'm just going to give it three. So I can store up to 3000 data which is going to take a long time, just so you guys know. But if you like have a chunk loaded, the, the base, I think the satellites will still work because they're, I, I, they're not actually there in, in orbit, okay, once they fly out. And then also we need to give this some power. So I always just give them three basic solar panels. 
there is also the large solar panel here um which i don't see any use for on the satellites i've never ran out of power with these right there so this right there and then we go ahead and click on build and then you guys see it takes a minute here and then that makes you a satellite and you see it shows id zero power storage three uh, power storage 3000 it generates three power and we have a data storage of 3000 so i'm gonna go ahead and take this satellite out and put the chip for it underneath it and i'm going to build um sorry this there i'm going to build altogether six of them so i'm gonna build the second one and then over here we're gonna have the same spiel again the only difference is that i'm gonna put two uh, the composition scanners now like that put this in here so instead of the optical sensor we put a composition scanner a sensor and then we're gonna do the same thing again for the third type right here the mass detector so same thing it's always the same the only difference is like i mentioned is the part that we put up here and i'm going to just start this one and i'm gonna build all six of them and then we'll see what we do with those so i finished crafting all six of these satellites with the corresponding chip underneath um, I messed up the ID order a little bit, but it really doesn't matter, especially if you play on a server. Later on, you're going to have, you know, many different IDs anyway. Now, how do we load these? The way you load them is you shift right click the rocket and then you click on the satellite bay. And then we put the satellite in here, which is tied to ID zero, just like that. And then, of course, we still need to. Did I not make one of those? No. Okay, let's go ahead and get a linker real quick i need to also give each one of these guys i put um, fuel by hand in here but we're gonna go ahead and link each one of these rockets up and it's always the same for every one of them oh, okay i thought that for a second that maybe it did not get linked but simply just like that all six of them so all six of these are loaded and they're being fueled or are fueled already and the next thing you want to use is a rocket monitoring station because there is no way when you when you look at this interface there is nothing for us to select a destination because we just shoot them up into into the orbit um and the other thing is there's no way for me to make this rocket go there is no launch button or anything but that is where the rocket monitoring stations come in so you need to go ahead and also shift right click this and then onto the rocket and then when you open the interface you see now that this is linked and there is a launch button with altitude and so on and so on so we're gonna go ahead and link all of these up here real quick i wanted to mention real quick that if i was playing in survival now i would only have one of these launch pads okay because after you shoot these rockets up into the satellite rockets up into space they will never come back down here. At least I do not know of a way to recall these so you can repurpose them or anything. Once they're up in space, they're there for good. And there's a way later to get rid of them by destroying them remotely. And then I'll show you that in a second. So now that everything of this is um, loaded and ready to go, we'll go ahead and click on launch on each one of them. And you see, they just go up into space and it's, I really love this, the way it looks. And we're gonna go ahead and shoot each one of them up because there's nothing else we need to do with them oh there we go there's the sound i love this i think this is so cool look at that yeah <laughs> we're taking over space this is so cool i want to see if i can get a screenshot of this all right very nice all right so now that these guys going up into space i'm just gonna wait until this last one is uh, the altitude all the way out here and then it's going to reset and drop back down here and then i know it is an out it's in uh, in orbit it's out in space okay so now the next thing you need to do is to actually talk to these guys is you need to make satellite terminals okay again you can only make one of these at a time because you can simply switch between these chips and now i'll show you what these are used for um, satellite terminal it says no link right so let's go ahead and put this first one in here and it shows you info power 3000 data storage 3000 and it has already collected seven data and this should go up here in just a second there we go now it went up to eight and it shows you it has an optical telescope so we're going to put the second one into here because we all shot them up at about the same time they're all going to show us around eight right now 
So this is the first one with the composition scanner, the second one, and now this is the mass scanner, and this is the other mass scanner, right? So now you are you you are connected to these satellites, and they are co collecting data in that storage in those chips that I showed you guys, in these green chips right here, the data storage unit, which I'm gonna give myself a bunch right now, because the way you can get this data now is by either putting a chip right here, like this. And then now if I click on connect, it will take this data and store it. I believe, let's see what happens first. Let's click on here. So we're connected. And it put it into the internal buffer right here of the satellite terminal. And if you click on here on store to chip, now you see the data storage went onto the chip. And then we can also pull it back out of, no, sorry, if I click here, now it will put it only back into this one right here. Uh, into, I'm pretty sure if I, no, I'm sorry, yes. If you don't have a chip and you click on connect, it will put it in the buffer. If you have a chip, once you have the chip and you say connect, no, okay, I'm not sure. I think once you have it on here, it will store it here, okay? So this is a way for you to store these chips. And I'm going to just do it on each one of the first ones here for a second. So let's go ahead and put another chip in here and say store to chip and connect. And now I think again, you need to have it in here first and now it will always store it there. And then we're gonna do it the same on the last one. Get it here, it's in there buffer and now we store it to the chip. And now I'm pretty sure when we check the first one, the buffer is empty and it's 15. So now once you have it in here and click this, it will always just pipe it right into the chip. Okay, and on these other ones, I wanted to show you that we're going to keep those for a second. Now, what do we do with this data? Okay, this data is going to be used with two machines. You need to make an astro body data processor. It's the thing right here. Um, there's nothing to it. It just has a ton of data ports in the back and then a front and input output and a power source, of course. So here it is. It's already formed. Okay, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, let me go ahead and break this so you guys can actually see it. It has a bunch of stone slabs on top and then when you right click it it gets this cool little look now there's a reason i put this one off the ground for now for here it's because we're gonna run from the second ones here oh i need my data cable this is the third cable that comes with uh, advanced rocketry we already covered the liquid and the energy in the beginning so these guys right here have the data but this one i'm going to directly pull into that astro body um machine instead of using the chips to go back and forth right so you guys see here data it has 25 of this one and then we also need to connect that one and then we'll come over here and this is where i'm gonna go underneath here and it will automatically then put them there three data buses for the three types of data while editing i forgot to mention why i put it one off the ground actually and ran the cables underneath is because these cables take up a full block space and when they're behind it, you cannot access the one in the middle in case you want to put a chip, uh, one of these data chips right here into it again to uh, extract some of the data. So that is the reason for this tutorial while I put them underneath because we're going to pull data back out of here in just a minute. So now there is still nothing in these buffers right here, right? The way we get it into these buffers is by coming into these machines and simply saying connect. And it's going to come right there. And we're going to connect this one as well. So it always goes into the internal buffer. All right. And then I need a redstone signal like always. And I'm going to have to put. Let's see. Um, let's just use this guy for now. Let's just put a lever right there. And now when we check this data is gone because the data bus pulled it out. Let's go ahead and put another lever here. Oh, the sign is in the way. Okay. So. Uh, I guess we'll put it on top like this. Let me just change this one over then as well. Just so it's the same. It's the screen from uh, RF tools that is in my way. That's why I didn't get it right. And it's sucking it out. No, it's I already did connect. Yes, perfect. And now you can see in the back here when you go to these data buses that this is the composition bus. This is the distance bus and this is the mass bus. And you can also take the chips that is what i wanted to show you in case you don't want to run cables or it's farther away you can also take these chips out 
from here and you can put them into i'm not sure yet if we can put them directly i believe we can so this is the mass distance mass so we'll put this in here and then store to buffer and you guys see it put it all in here and the chip of course is empty and i believe when you click on here it stores it back to the chip so you can take the data back out but for now we're just gonna leave it in here let's use all three real quick we have a little more this is distance right there go ahead and store that 68 and then the last one is composition right there 58 so why is this one here 58 73 and 59 what's happening here all right, you are directly putting it over there. There's 25 stored in here. Go ahead and connect. And then store to chip so it continues. I'm just trying to figure out why one of them has more. 28. 31. Maybe the distance is getting collected a little faster. I'm not sure. But so anyway, so this is the ways of getting the data over here. So now what do we do with this data? Um, this is where the process here used to be reverse of the way I'm showing it to you. And that is why it took me so long to figure this out. Um, but it has to do with the observatory. I have four set up over here. Um, three of them are formed already. And the last one here we're going to form together in a second. But I wanted to talk about the multi-block structure for a quick second. I only have four here with the four different types of motors. This one has a regular motor, and then this one has the um, advanced motor, and then this one is the enhanced motor, and then this one is the elite motor. But you can also build all four of these instead of the lens up here with glass, okay? And the lens is just the way I would go because by the time you get to this part, you already have a precision assembler or you couldn't make half of the machines that we made um, so far. And it also um, increases the distance of the observatory. And this is going to be something that I'm going to go to in a second because this is something that I don't understand right now. And it's possible that it's simply because it's a bug. But you guys see there's a diagonal. There is the third lens is up here. It's a diagonal like this. So that is going to be the actual, um, what is it called? Telescope. In this observatory okay so you could also have these as glass but i have them all four set up as um with the lens sorry about that so let's go ahead and form this guy here by default the the lowest one here with the regular motor has a, a observable distance of 50. now i know that if you instead of lenses you have glass it would be observable distance of 35. the next one high up has 75 and this one is 125 and this one has 200. Now, I don't see any reason to go beyond this one here. And I don't even think you need the lenses. You could just go with glass as well. But I wanted to show you guys the upgraded ones. Because hopefully this part that I'm, I'm going to point out here in a second will be fixed. Because I don't think it's working as intended. Okay. But how do the observatories work? Right now, they don't work at all if I turn them on. Okay. Because you need to have nighttime. But if I set the world tonight, you guys see the first one here opens and it reveals the um, telescope. Beautiful model. I love it. Absolutely cool. Super. Um, but the problem is that in order for me to do anything here now, okay, I don't see any asteroids. And even if I give this, let me just take this off here real quick. I don't want to clear all. I'm going to take off my spacesuit again. Um, you need to give it a asteroid chip right there. So let me get two of them real quick. Um, right in here. But again, when I click on scan, nothing happens because it says it consumes 100 distance data. And this is where it's reversed and what it used to be because you used to start with the observatory and that gave you the initial data, which you then used in the, in the uh, astro body data processor, right? But now you need data to scan for asteroids, all right? And the way we do that is, and I gave myself um, data storage units with 1,000 distance each because I didn't want to wait for that over there to fill. You come into the data port and you put the chip in here and you store it to buffer. It can hold 2,000, um, but you're never going to need more than 100. So I'm not sure exactly what this is for, and it's gonna see, you're going to see it right now. When I click on scan, 
you guys see we have a bunch of small asteroids and you can go through them and you see that some of them have different stuff they never have anything but cobblestone iron gold and redstone and just depending on this one is not a bad one is five iron six it it says here nine plus minus five okay so the number up here is you that's the base number and then you can so you can get anywhere from four to 14 when you go up there okay and this one has a base of 11 plus minus 6 11 plus minus 11 and so on and you go through here and now when we count this here this yellow one is four so let's go here five six seven eight and you need to scroll every time nine and ten so this one has ten asteroids scanned right now right well one might think that if you take one that has a stronger distance number here right now i have to give it this chip first and give it some in the storage and now if we come here and click on scan we again see asteroids they are different but let's see here four five six seven eight nine ten this is the first time guys the very first time that i see something else here it still only shows you 10 but now i see an enriched which I don't I don't see every time you run this by the way every time I load a new world and run this again I get different asteroids so it's complete RNG I believe but again you only get 10 asteroids and this one enriched I don't know I mean you get one iron ore and very little cobble and nothing else so I don't see any use right now of going with the higher values um, and I didn't even have to turn this on I just noticed that is interesting it used to 100 if I click on scan again, it's still the same ones. Okay. So anyways, like I said, I am not sure what the point is of upgrading this because right now the way it is, I really hope that the mod author is going to overhaul this whole process because it is, it is so much fun playing with the asteroids and then also with the mining rocket. But there is a, a lot of little problems right now that it doesn't make it worth your time and your resources to do this. Um, but I still want to show you everything, right? So the way you now get the asteroids, let's let's choose one here. Something that is not terrible. Okay. I said something that is not terrible. All right, this one isn't bad. 9 plus 5, 11 plus 6, 11 plus 11. So you click on this here after you put an asteroid chip in it, and it doesn't use... Wait, does it need to be night? It's possible that it actually needs to be night so the thing operates. Okay. Yes. All right. So now it got the asteroid chip. Or maybe it was a, because this is supposed to actually charge up slowly. And now we have an asteroid chip over here. Asteroid 10279. Okay. And you guys see it has six different values. Distance, humidity, temperature, composition, atmosphere, and mass. Only three of those we can collect data from. Um, because the other three, I, I don't know how to get temperature, atmosphere, or humidity. I just don't think that they're implemented yet. Um, but the other three, you need to fill in the astral body data processor here, okay? Which I filled up with a bunch of this data already. And we can take this chip. Uh, by default, these are off. Let me show you about this by default. We put this in here and then you turn it on. And now it fills this one here with composition data. You turn this one on, it fills it with distance. And then this one, of course, is the last one, the mass data. Now, these three values, from what I understand, um, and there's no, no nothing on the wiki or anything, unfortunately. Um, the distance data means that how likely are you to hit the asteroid? The composition means what kind of ores will you actually find there that are supposed to be there and mass is how much will it mine of it. So before you send up your rocket, you kind of want those three at a thousand to actually hit the asteroid, get the ores you want to get and get the amount you want to get. Okay. But of course, you guys see here, it takes a very long time to fill this up to a thousand as well as it takes a very long time. It's been quite some time here. This is the wrong one. This one here um, that we've been collecting here. And 373 are in here. This has been going for close to an hour since I actually put this in here and editing the video and so on. So you really, this takes a very long time to get this, right? So in my opinion, setting all this up and all the time AFKing and whatnot you need to do 
you should get more out of it. Um, and especially because I believe there's a big bug going on right now that I explained to you in a second. But right now, of course, I don't want to wait for this. Okay, so I already did this earlier and I made, oops, it's in the output port, I forgot. Once you have it filled, it goes automatically in output port. And you can see here is asteroid 9666 um, that has about the same composition that the other one had. I went for the one that had the most iron, gold, and redstone. So we'll take this out, and I'm actually going to make a copy of this right now, just in case I mess it up. And let me get rid of this one. So we have our asteroid chip. Here I have a bunch more chips with distance, mass, and so on if I need it. And now we're going to go over to the new rocket and actually put this to use. In order to build a asteroid mining rocket, you just make a regular rocket like always, bunch of fuel tanks and engines. And then we're going to stick down here a guidance computer and a chest. And then we can put a drill. Now, by default, you only need one drill. Um, but the more drills, the faster it is. So we're going to fill this entire thing up here with drills. So we're going to have nine of them. By default, I believe if you use one drill, the mining mission takes 15 minutes. And we're going to see how far we reduce it. I haven't tried it yet with nine. Um, the time on how long it takes this mission. Okay. So let's go ahead and come over here and scan this real quick. If it's actually going to fly off. And then let's see. Play for lift, lift off. And there we go. And we build it. Let's go ahead and put these items away real quick. And then of course, when it's done, we're going to go ahead and link it up. So it gets fueled. And we're also going to connect our... Um, rocket monitoring station right here and then we're just going to help it out getting filled here real quick so it's faster and it is filled now so the first empty spot here is actually your chest when you open it oh look at that you can't open the chest because it's actually covered on top that is hilarious i did not know that but i'm glad i showed it so we're gonna have to go ahead and disassemble this puppy Take this out and take the... Ch I guess we can leave it like this. It doesn't really matter. And now we'll go ahead and build it. <laughs> That's funny. That it even knows that you can't open the chest because it's covered. Okay, there we go. So can we now open the chest? Yes. So this is your chest inventory when it returns. This is where the goodies are going to be. And I need to go ahead. I'm just going to fill it by hand real quick. And then again, link this one and this one just so it's ready. Okay, and then the second one is your guidance computer right here. This is where you're going to put our asteroid chip. Okay, and then all we got to do is now let's see here how mid eight drills, how fast the mission is going to be. We click on launch and nothing here will change until uh, the rocket is actually out in, in space. Okay, it should update any second. There we go. One minute and 50 seconds. One minute and 51 seconds, I guess. So after it landed, you open the chest, and these are all the goodies that it has brought us back, which isn't bad for something that took less than two minutes, pretty much. Well, with lift off and coming back down, let's say about four minutes, um, but that is not bad at all. Now, here comes the problem, guys, that supposedly you can automate this. I've seen a video from the mod maker himself that uh, showed that via redstone and so on, you can automate this. So once it's back filled... Um, it, it lifts back off. The problem I'm having here is that the rocket fuel shows this and the rocket is empty. So it did not remember this rocket. Glad the smoke is finally gone. The same with, I'm not sure if this is still set up. If I click on launch, nothing happens. Let's go ahead. Oh yes, this is the big bug I was talking about earlier. I forgot about that, sorry. When you check the guidance computer, it's empty. It used up the asteroid chip. And this is what breaks the rocket mining for me, okay? Because if you think about it, how much time it takes for you to, from the three different data types, to collect 1,000 each plus an additional 100 distance to scan, write the chip that you also have to craft, which, you know, isn't super cheap every time an ender pearl and so on. So you, this is a one-time trip right now, and that just does not make it worth your time, effort, and resources, in my opinion. So I'm hoping that this is simply a bug, or that it is in the middle of overhauling this whole process, which I'm really hoping for. Um, but I wanted to show you guys how it works overall. And, I mean, you got good materials, right, for a short trip. But again, you would have to make an asteroid chip every time now, and that's just that's that's not feasible, in my opinion.
anyways, I showed you guys how to shoot satellites up and have them scanning, um, what to do with the data, how to use the observatory, and then and, and eventually send up a rocket to mine for you. And hopefully when the process is overhauled, uh, the tutorial itself will still be valid, so it's still the same way. If not, then I might make an update one day when it has been changed. But next episode, we are going to start with space stations. As you guys can see over there, there's a little sneak peek. And this is where the mod gets really beefy. This is the, the biggest fun in this uh, mod is when you get into space with your space station and so on. And there's a ton of things I'm going to show you in next episode. And then in the fifth episode, we're actually going to um, go through the process and how you get to other planets because there is a lot of planets out there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, stay safe and bye-bye.